morning everyone hope everybody's having a good weekend thus far saturday morning we are in front of this 225 gallon aquarium we finally got the sump situated so it was a small little hiccup just needed to get more salt water so it should have been easy but you know we didn't get the water until you just seen that we just did the other video so we just got the water so now i have the uh the sump up and running and um the pump i really really like the pump an issue I had with another refugium that I kept trying to build and, you know, having a pump that don't allow you to have, well, having a pump that don't have a controller, which allows you to control the water volume, it's hard. So when I first initially set the pump up and I had it running at 100%, it was too much. It was, it was draining the sump. So now I have it running at 78% and it's perfect. So I really enjoyed that. So I went from 100, I went down to 90, it was still kind of too fast. I went down to 75, it was too slow. Went up to 78, perfect. So if you can't pick up a pump that has a controller, you should definitely do it. Hyger makes a nice one, a very, very good one. I'm going to put it in the description down below the link. So if you want to get a pump just like that Hyger pump right there, get on over there and check them out. So the reason why I'm standing in front of this 225 gallon aquarium right here, so this is our saltwater aquarium. We have our OG Tessalata right here in here. We also have a yellowhead Mori eel in here. And then we have a white spot grouper, small, probably about like six inches. And then we have two panther groupers, also known as the humpback grouper. So um, those guys are like, maybe like 11, I don't know, probably like 10 inches at best at best like 10 inches nonetheless that's the stocking for this aquarium we spend a ton of money buying salt water every month buying rodi water every month so the best way you probably can tell from the title where i'm going with this the best way to save some money when you have a salt water aquarium is make the water yourself so having the rodi water system to make your salt water to throw into your tank. If you just have evaporation, just straight RODI, go into your aquarium. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to set up our RODI filtration system. Uh, first one, never set one up myself. So um, without any further ado, let's get to that water system. All right guys, so here's the filtration system right here. Oh, let's take a step back. So I didn't even show you guys the finished product of this right here. So um, some of you may remember what this looked like. I'll put a little photo right here. So it's amazing what a little paint will do. Just went ahead and just, you know, made it look, made it look fresh. Looks good. All right, so like I was saying, so we're gonna set this up. So here's, all right, so here's the instructions that it come with. Pretty straightforward, match up the colors. So I'll tell you what it, what it says basically. So let's get on over here. All right, let's get you back a little bit. Okay, so what we have going on here, so blue, comes out of the post carbon and it will end up going into the faucet which they provide the faucet right here so I would you I'm gonna basically just drill a hole put it right there and then um, come from the bottom so that's pretty pretty straightforward right so most of these hoses were already connected like these were already done I do need to put this filter cartridge into here that's the only one that i need to do and um other than that so let's keep going with this then we have the black one that's the drain line so we're going to go into the drain down below and we're going to go before the p-trap if you don't know what the p-trap it's the little u at the bottom of the pipe it holds water so it will prevent gases from coming up from the sewer line so toilet sinks everything has a p-trap otherwise all the gases will come up through that line and you'll smell it sometimes a p-trap if it's a floor drain 
four drains have p-traps and it will also sometimes if it dries you have the gases coming up so if it's inside of maybe your, your garage or something like that if it starts smelling you know like sewage go ahead and first i would say put a little bleach with some water pour that down the drain just so you kill any of that bacteria and then go ahead and fill it up with water and then still put a little bit of bleach or something like that a little bit of pine salt whatever that you want to put in there i usually use a little bit of bleach put a lip in there so that way if anything is still trying to just sit there and fester and you know cause more of a smell it kill it but anyway that's neither here nor there so black line goes into the drain and then lastly we have water in so water in is going to be coming from the red line so we have the faucet we have water in and then we have water out so i also bought some of this tubing just in case it didn't reach um but let's go ahead and get to it let's do this i'm excited i could even if i didn't want to go and put a hole in my pipe i could even i could even just have it hanging just like this going into the sink. So it's really up to me. Um, but let's see. Already got all those connected on the ends. So none of these ends came with these little shutoff valves right here. I had to buy these so I could add the tubing to make it uh make it longer. So you could either you could either use that or you could just buy a little coupler. I chose that just in case I wanted to be able to shut it off at that point. But it's really up to you. So let's go ahead and get this done. I need to grab my drill, my drill bit. Let me get some things. All right, so I got the tools I needed. I'm going to talk about this tool bag in the, in the upcoming video. But um, so all I'm doing is I'm going to take each fitting... I love these compression fittings. So just going to take each one, give myself enough line that I think I'll need to get under the sink, and then I will cut. Give myself more than enough. I'd rather have excess than not enough. There we go. All right, that's the first one. Next, this is water in. So we still need a fitting because I have to go up to the faucet and it's kind of far so there we go give myself enough slack I think right here is good enough and then lastly this one is the water in and again just give myself enough slack more than enough and then we cut it. All right. So now that I have all my ends cut, we are going to start with the drain. So the drain down there, it comes with this little handy, comes, this is called the saddle. So basically you sandwich the pipe in between here, you drill a little hole right through there and then you connect the pipe I mean, you connect the tubing so that way it drains straight into here so and then it also comes with this nice little adhesive that allow it to stick right into place so let's go ahead and do that real quick so selecting the right size drill bit for this hole is very important so the way i like to do that every anytime that i need to drill a hole for like a screw or something like that the way i like to do it I take whatever it is, screw, in this case it's vinyl tubing, I find a drill bit and I basically put the tubing right next to it. As long as, if it's the same size and one, you see that? That's spot on. That's how I'll know that I have the right size. Also, 
if you want to speed things up. This is a quarter inch tubing. This is a quarter inch drill bit. In the event that you don't know the size of the tubing, that's the way that you can figure it out. All right, so let's get down there and drill a hole. All right, guys, so look, this is how I plan on doing this. You could put this saddle in the front, the side, or the back. So I could actually access it better in case there's a leak, in case there's any kind of issues. I'm going right here in the front. If you care a lot about aesthetics, you may not want to go in the front, but I don't. Also, make sure you hold on to the pipe. You don't want to put more than one hole and you don't want to damage it. All right. All right. So don't push too hard. Once you feel like it's grabbing, just ease it in. All right, let's go ahead and get this on there. All right, guys, so we have this right here that I was telling you about. This is like a little adhesive pad. We're using that as well. So this goes right over the hole. You see that? Just like that. All right. And then this is going to go just like that. And then this goes inside so the beauty of this let's show you all right see how that goes right on in and come right on out so that's how this goes in just like that so it's not just touching the pipe it actually goes in the pipe then this comes around the back we have these nice handy dandy screws let's go ahead and screw it so i already have the line in the pipe now we're just going to go ahead and screw this. Let's use a drill. No patience. So don't do one side at a time. Do it to try to do it together. Here we go. That's the drain. All right. So we got the drain into place. Let's go ahead and do. Let's drill in the faucet. So small hole. That's the diameter we're looking for. This looks like half inch. Perfect, half inch. So let's do that. See where I want it at. It looks like it has these grooves right, has those grooves right there. So I'm putting it right up in there. See if there's anything on the underside, it is. But I can still make that work. Let's check under there. Okay, so really, it has an opening for me right here. So I'm going to actually put it where that opening is. Under there, there's like, it's just not gonna be flat. It makes way more sense to go ahead and put it right here. So that's what I'll do, it's all right. Come on. Okay, it don't really want to drill through that. So let me go with a smaller, smaller drill bit. Sometimes that works, in case you didn't know. Let's see if that worked this time. Went right through. 
it definitely work again. So sometimes if a big bit, like a half inch drill bit don't work, just go ahead and hit it with a little quarter inch drill bit, smaller drill bit. And then you could go ahead and punch right on through with the, with the bigger drill bit. You see how that still won't go through? Watch this. So sometimes, or you could find, if you have a different set of bits, you could also do that. But if you don't, I do, but I'd rather just show you this. So there we go. That's the next size. Now let's see if I could get this big half inch. That one was a 3 8 of an inch drill bit. There we go. All right. Got it right on in there. So in this, just like that. Let's go ahead and get this into place. Long overdue. You all, y'all hear Harley? Yeah, this is long overdue, guys. I'm waiting a long time to have the all DI water filter set up. It's been a ton of money lagging. But yeah, so if you guys can, I think I paid like 150 for this water filter. It was on a, it's a six stage max water reverse osmosis system. Here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, get this back on. There we go. All right. So we got that into place. Let's go ahead and turn it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's connect this blue one. It's not blue anymore. It's clear vinyl. Let's get that connected. All right. So as you can see, I just removed the filter. We got to disconnect the red hose. So I could put the new cartridge into that canister right there. So that's what we do. Open that on up. All right. Get that all the way in. Make sure you put it, put it in the right direction. You don't want to be removing it taking it out repeatedly but yeah so I uh, lost my let's see, get that. I lost the compression fitting so I got to go and buy another one all right now let's get this back on the wall we could test it now I need to go ahead and hook up the water that's the last thing. Hook up the water and then we can test it. I can still run the water through the system, but I can't hook up that faucet until, until I get that compression fitting. So let's go ahead and hook up the water real quick. Make sure you have some Teflon tape on hand and uh, let's go ahead and get that done real quick. Cut the water off before you work on it. Make sure it's connected to cold, never hot. And uh, let's get this done. All right, got the coat off. Still wanna put a little towel down there so I don't drip any water. All right, let's see how I can show you. Did you see me? Nonetheless, here we are, let's go, let's get it done. If we get some water, Can we get a drip, a little few drips. That's exactly why we have the towel there. All right, so here's this fitting. I want to put some Teflon tape on there anyway. That prevents any leaks. If you end up having a leak and you didn't put the Teflon tape, it might be the reason why you have a leak. So that's why it's a good rule of thumb to just put the tape. And I will also put the tape around 
the fitting that didn't have it. I'll show you. So, it don't take no time to go ahead and just and put the tape on. So, for a situation like this, it's kind of, oh, it had it. Oh, it did have it. Okay, it just wore off. So, yeah, that means that if I wound, if I wound up getting a leak, that's why, because the Teflon tape failed. All right, and like I said, it don't take no time to do that. Let's go ahead and put this fitting on first. So it's getting tight, and then just like half a turn after that, once it get tight. Let's get this on there. Can you see what I'm doing? Not really, huh? All right, there we go. That should have gave you this angle from the start. So we tighten up that one down there, and now we're tightening up this one. Once it gets tight, like a half a turn, like right there. That's it. You do not want to over tighten that. Cut this water on. See if we have any leak right here. Okay. So this is open. The system is hot. Just filled up the first canister. Second one is filling up. No leaks down there. It's the first time setting this bad boy up. So that really wasn't that bad, right? It was so easy that I probably should have did it a long time ago. But you know what it's done today? It's done now. And uh, we should definitely start being able to save some dollars. Dollar dollars bill, y'all. Dollar dollar bill. No leak down there whatsoever. It must be going through another canister first. Because it didn't fill this one up yet. Oh, yes, it did. Okay. This one up here is getting wet now. That one up there is getting wet. I can hear that is that water is going into this tank. Oh wow, it's a leak up top. It's a leak up there. All right. Seems that it wasn't tight. Not surprised, because like I said, I haven't set it up before. So let's make sure that is tight and not too tight. Still leaking a bit. All right. Still leaking a bit. <clears throat> okay, let's see what happens. When I open this up. Come on, finish filling up. Let's 
Let's see, do I need some tape on this? I might need some Teflon tape on this right here. wet and it did need some teflon tape on that that's the difference so do yourself a favor grab that tape tape it up first because you don't want to have to do what i just did get your glasses wet makes it a lot easier to do this ahead of time that was my fault i should have checked it it's been sitting for like a year almost. Which is not being used. All right. Let's go. Let's get that back on there now. See if that make if that made the difference. That made the difference. That's good. No leaks. So do it the right way the first time. Use that Teflon tape. It'll save you uh, from getting wet. All right. So there you have it. Let's go ahead. So it has to fill up. There you have it though. Let's see. We're still not gonna get any water because this thing, this tank has to fill up and it's gonna take some time. But we got this filter finally set up, guys. All I need to do is just get my little my gauge. Nah, I guess it can hang, whatever. I'll probably have it situated some kind of way. But anyway, that oh here's ha <laughs> ha yes. So I thought I lost it. I did not. So I thought I, the, the, uh, the restrictor and the compression fitting right here, they're clear. I thought it was going to be like, I don't know why I imagine it being copper, but it's not. So therefore, let's go ahead and finish the job. So the way this go, this nut, when it's a compression fitting, this nut go first and then this fitting right here, the compression ring, and then the restrictor, just like that. And then so all of them in sync, when you screw it, that's how you get a good seal. All right, now we're done. Let's, turn, let's cut on this water. Let's hide this. We are gonna make it look pretty. First, I wanna make sure it works. That's pretty to me. Is it working? Okay, we got black water. That means that the carbon, all that. Let's do it again. Huh? See, sputtering. So, there we go. There we go. We got it done. We finally got it done. So excited about this, guys. So excited about this. So excited about that. Just another piece of the puzzle to the fish room, guys. One more piece knocked down. And this right here, this section right here looks so much better than it did going to eventually put in another rack of fish tanks right here, all smaller tanks, 20 gallons, things like that. So uh, 
yeah got to keep on growing and building and doing better you know we don't want to stay stagnant be complacent so so with that being said i hope you enjoyed this video i hope that you learned something don't forget to like comment subscribe hit that notification bell follow me on instagram at the fish corner follow me on facebook the fish corner follow me on tiktok the fish corner and i appreciate you guys for stopping by i'll catch you in the next one peace